Hello and welcome to another Blender Know How tutorial. In this video we're just going to go over how to create a rock and we'll be using displacement textures and um, and this is all going to be procedural so this is some cool things we're going to be doing in this. So I'm just going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to put up a new Blender scene. Uh, I'm going to turn on uh, my screencast keys so that you can see down here in the bottom left corner what I am clicking on so you can see. So I'm going to start by going to the modifier tab and adding a subdivision surface. Um, I'm just going to increase this to like 7. Uh, you probably don't want to click to 7. I just happen to know that 7 works great for me on my computer. However, if you're working on a laptop, you'll probably only want to go up to like 3 to keep performance great. Um, I don't know. You'll have to play with that. You'll probably crash it if you go too high, so just be careful. Uh, so I'm going to click on my sphere that I have now, or the cube that I had before, and I'm going to make a new panel by dragging up there in the bottom right corner of that. Go right here and click Shader, and I'm just going to position these a little bit different because we're not going to be doing too much with this honestly today. Uh, most of what we're going to be doing is down here in the material output. So let's go ahead and start by adding a noise texture and drag that color straight into the displacement. You're not going to see anything because displacement is only calculated at render time. So even if you click on this guy, any of these viewport um, shading, you won't really see much. And I guess you will see a little bit, but uh, you won't get the full effect like uh, the displacement that we're looking for. Like you can see around the silhouette, the silhouette is circular. And even if we go to render this right now, it still will be. Um, first off, let's go to cycles. It works a lot better in cycles uh, for me. So I'm going to go into options right here and click settings and then turn on displacement from displacement only to displacement and bump. You can see it messes with things a lot, although that is closer to what we want. But if you click on this, it just goes straight back to the silhouetted version. Uh, I'm actually going to try something. Let's see if it works in cycles. Yeah, so cycles doesn't even do that either. It only works at render time on cycles, not EV. I'm also going to change this to GPU compute just to keep this running fast. Okay, so now we have this in there. You can see it doesn't look right, and it's not. So let's add Shift A, add a displacement. Throw that in there and change that from normal to height, and looks better already. I mean, it's not a rock by any means, but we're getting there. Um, I'm also going to change this scale. I'm going to decrease it a lot. We're going to go start off by getting the rough shape of the uh, rock first. So this is going to be the thing that determines like the oblongity. Like I don't know what the words are for this, but the yeah, there's just the overall shape of it. So I'm going to go with something um, in the that's a little too small actually. Something in that range, just to give it some shape. So shape is for this one. Uh, now I'm going to hit Shift A and add a color ramp. Oops, Shift A add a color ramp. And if I just drag that in there, so now what this is going to do for us is we can increase the contrast. I, I you you can use the contrast brightness thing and it will do the same thing. However, I like the this a little better because it's a little more visual. You can shift things to the right easier than you can. I feel like with other things and get the shape that you want. So uh, I'm going to leave it for there right there, but we will want this later cuz you can tweak this and it will be it's cuz it's procedurally generated, you can change a lot of things really quickly. I'm going to move this over here a little ways. Um let's also create uh shift A and add another noise texture. Now, we're going to do something kind of interesting with this. Uh, something fun you can do is you can actually drag this color into the vector of this and it'll change some of the, the results of this. So one thing that I've noticed is you can do this in a lot of things because so the color if you think about this the color is a, is a, a vector if you know like um, computer science terms or coding terms vectors are elements that are stacked like on top of each other essentially. You can stack more elements and color is is just a vector of three 
different values, red, green, and blue. So you can actually use that and it will do uh, some interesting effects as you put it in there because they're they are technically compatible even though this is two different data types. It's kind of interesting. So now we'll hit shift A and hit search for, I'm going to throw in a mapping here to give this noise texture some stuff, some more information. I'll do texture coordinate and then go to object into the vector. Give us a little more information, something more to work with. I'm going to increase um, I should have done this a little earlier, but I like to increase the detail when I'm working on rocks all the way up. Um, and you'll notice that it gives it more, um, I don't know, like punch, I guess. So, something else, let, uh, let's start now by mixing some things in here. So, you can see this is this is starting to look a little bit like a rock, except for, it's just really jaggedy. We can turn down some of these things here. Um, like now it's looking more like concrete. So um, let's let's start with this though. Let's go and add another uh, noise. And let's throw this into another color ramp. And um, I'm going to add a mix. Whoops. So what this is going to do is we're going to add the small details into this. So let's what? mix RGB right there. So we're going to throw in and make the smaller details. And what this is going to be doing is we're going to throw the color into the factor of this. And we're going to make this, you can make this whatever you want, but as you play with the settings here, so I'm going to turn this in, these are going to be a little higher. I can leave that there actually, but um, yeah, it should be fine. Now I'm just going to increase the darkness here, and you'll see that it's almost like increasing a little bit of the size. And if you play with these, you can actually get like effects like that, where it's a little bit more random, because rocks aren't like perfectly random, I guess. I don't know. That sounds kind of weird, but you can play with these settings to get that kind of effect, the more mountainous effect. Okay, so this is looking fairly well, and you can also play with this setting to do some interesting effects, like you can blow it out a little bit if you just go with a little more white. I'm going to undo that for now. Okay, so we're, we're getting somewhere. I'm going to add another mix, and like I was telling you earlier, uh, something interesting is you can, so we threw the color into the vector, we can also throw a vector into the color and it will give us some interesting effects because they are compatible again. So I'm going to just increase this, um, maybe decrease it a little bit, kind of play with the values, see what looks good. Maybe I'll just leave it at 0.5, that actually looks fine. So um, I'm going to play with these values. So this is the main... Um, structure of, of what we're working with here. Uh, I'm going to throw in the color into the vector here. Okay, so I think the the biggest thing that we need to do here is, you can see it doesn't look like a rock at all anymore after the, some of the previous things we just did, so the biggest thing we need to know here is right here, this factor, we're going to change it from this into more of the other with a little bit of that. So you can see how we get that effect and that's going to give it an effect that looks a lot more like a rock. So um, the biggest things you can do here now is these things over here you don't necessarily need to change a whole ton but I would change um, if you want to make things look different or better for certain, certain situations you can just increase or decrease these values and it will make the rock look different. Also I guess you do want to change one thing if you want to make it look completely different if you increase the location of this, it will shift all of the um, the location of all of those vectors that we just created. So this is um, you can actually create thousands of rocks by um, copying them and just changing this location. Or technically, you could even change it to a different kind of texture coordinate system where it would, as you move it, it would change it and it'd be fine.
So that's the tutorial for today. I hope that you've liked this. Um, you can render this out in cycles and it will look great. Um, play with it. Also, if you want to, you can add some more um, stuff up here to give it some effects. And you can always add a, an actual shader onto this as well. So good luck, have some fun, and we'll talk to you next time.